Good morning, class. It is Saturday, the 28th of March, and this is going to be our new format for teaching, unfortunately, but we're going to get through this together. So here we go. Today, we're going to use a piece of alder. Now, that's not normally in our wood kits. It used to be in prior semesters, um, but what I like about alder is they call it poor man's cherry. It has a grain pattern very similar to cherry, but it's a much softer wood, a lighter wood, and a lot less expensive. So today we're going to do a formulation that I developed for Tony Fortner's, the godmother to his parents, about 15 years ago for her kitchen remodel. So that's what we're going to do today. So the dye colors we're going to use today are from a dye maker we've used in class. This is the Artie dye, the Articol company which comes from Germany. We are going to use number 1605 light oak, a teaspoon of this, and an eighth of a teaspoon of number 138 blue. So this is gonna give us a, a greenish color, which is a color that was developed for this particular kitchen project. The owner showed me a picture in a magazine. It was a, a French country look, and she wanted to know if I could replicate that, and I said, of course I can do that. And so that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna take one teaspoon of 1605, level, dissolve it into the hot water a little bit at a time. So the light oak is going to give it a yellowish cast. And when we mix the blue, it's going to give it a greenish cast to it, which is the, what the color was that I was going for at the time. So this is hot distilled water. Now we're gonna go an eighth of the blue, the 138. There again, level. And what I like about this particular dye manufacturer, the grind on the dye powder is very consistent every year, year after year, as well as the colors that they produce. So it makes no difference to me if you wanna use this particular dye maker or somebody else's, but just become familiar with the colors that the dye produces. So now that it's dissolved, we put it into four ounces of hot distilled water and we're gonna add four ounces of room temperature, which is gonna give us eight ounces total. And now we're gonna strain this solution out. Previously, we made up our dye already. It is cooled down to room temperature, which is how you wanna apply it. We strain the dye as well, that's always very important. You'll see other videos where somebody will say it's not really that critical. If you have one piece of dye that's stuck to the side that didn't dissolve and your brush picks it up and you put it on the surface, you may get a big streak of color. So just please, trust me, strain the dye out. You can use the cone strainers that we've used in class. You can use coffee filters, or if you wanna be adventurous, you can use nylon stockings. Okay, now to apply the dye, dip the brush in, but we don't wipe it off. Well, I don't want to do that because I want the material loaded on the ends of the bristles. And I'm going to start away from the top and away from the side, so right about here, and then take it and work it towards the edges, keeping a nice wet edge. And I'm doing, you can see I'm doing the face of this first, and I'm doing that for a reason. I'll show you in a minute. You don't need a lot of the dye. It goes quite a long ways. So there we are. We've covered the surface already. Now we want to do, this is the end grain, and we want to do the end grain next. Why this is wet with the dye color, um, the end grain is the softest and most porous part. And if it wicks up onto the surface that's dry, you're going to see a hard water line. And if you notice, I'm just taking the brush on its edge to try to minimize any wraparound on the other side. I'm not wearing gloves in this particular instance. These dyes are non-toxic, food safe dyes, so it's not a concern, but you may want to wear gloves just to keep it off your skin and prevent um, discoloration. We're gonna wipe off any excess dye, and now we're gonna let this dry on its own, and it'll take probably about 10 minutes in today's weather. So here's our sample. Without the dye color, here's what the alder looks like in its natural state. And with the dye color, one application, this is the color we have. It's got a lot of green to it, and that color comes from that light oak in a combination with the blue. 
The next step we want to do is we want to seal the surface. We put our dye color on, so we want to put a quote unquote sanding sealer. Now in class we've been using this particular lacquer. It's a pre-catalyzed lacquer from the Valspar company. But since a lot of you don't own spray equipment, you may say, well, what can I do at home and get the same kind of results we've gotten in class? This particular product here is made by the Deft company, D-E-F-T. It's a spray can lacquer. It's the same type of lacquer that comes in these gallon containers. Uh, the difference only being is that this is thinned down more, so it'll go through the very small, tiny orifice at the beginning of it. The good thing I like about this particular uh, brand as well, it's got a nice wide fan pattern when I spray this. So having said that, let's go ahead and shoot our sealer on here. Shake it up a little bit, test it. Do just like we've done at school, go around the outside first. Now we're gonna keep a nice overlap 50% overlap on each pass that we make. That's really, really critical. As soon as this dries, the next step we have to do, as we've done before, is lightly sand it to knock down those wood fibers. And we'll put a first coat of clear lacquer over that, also in a spray can. And then we're gonna move on to the coloring step number two. Now this piece of sandpaper I'm using is a very worn out piece of 320. It's no longer good for sanding the bare wood, but it's perfect for sanding between clear coats of finish. If you were to use a brand new piece of 320, it would be too aggressive, could cut through the finish very easily, the sealer coat, and cut into your color, and you don't want to do that. You're just trying to knock those little whiskers down that raised up after the sealer coat. Now, we're going to apply our finish coat. And our finish coat is also going to be lacquer from the same company, the Deft Company, but this is gloss lacquer, like we've used in class as well. We'll shake this up a little bit. Do the same thing, go around the perimeter first. This is my modified Lazy Susan, my hand. Okay, since our sample piece is alder, and alder is a soft wood as opposed to a hardwood like maple, I'm gonna apply a second coat of the clear lacquer. And the reason I wanna do that is, before we move on to our glaze color, which is integral to our finished look of this piece, we want enough finish on the wood to make sure that the glaze isn't absorbed into the surface because as you remember, glazes are intermediate colors that are meant to be sandwiched between layers of clear color. So let's put a second coat of lacquer on this again. And I'll do what's called a crosshatch pattern this time. I'll spray it both directions, the length of it and then the width of it. So there we have it. We'll let this dry, then we're gonna move on to our glaze color. The next step what we wanna do is we're gonna apply a glaze color to this. Now this particular glaze, and if you remember me talking about this in class, glazes are intermediate colors that are meant to be sandwiched between layers of clear finish. They're not a stain, they're not a paint. They're basically translucent and it, this water-based glaze from Modern Masters, which is the one we're gonna to use today, that almost looks like white glue. And it's very thick. So we're gonna thin this down a little bit first and then we're gonna add our colorant to it. Four ounces of this water-based glaze from Modern Masters. And to that I added about an ounce and a half of just regular water, just bottled water. It doesn't have to be distilled in this case. So we wanna thin it down to where it's a very creamy consistency to where we can move it around on the surface. So the next thing we want to do is our coloring agent for this glaze is going to be actually pigment. And I know I've talked a little bit about this in class. So these particular pigments, uh, these are from a company called Paint Solutions. Uh, these are developed for all the water-based coatings now. It used to be when you would go into the paint store, you would get a gallon of flat paint and you would get, if you wanted the matte same color in enamel and an oil-based paint, they would disperse the same colorants into the oil base that they did the water-based flat wall paint. Now in Southern California, since we don't have oil-based paints much anymore, they developed new colorants for all new waterborne systems. The paint companies got sued a few years ago with these new paints that they advertised as zero VOCs. Even though the paints were zero VOCs, the colorants were not. So they developed these brand new colorants that are totally z uh, zero VOC. So they are compliant. So to this glaze color, we're gonna add 
three quarters of an ounce of yellow light. And like I say, this is pigment and not a dye color. The more pigment we add, the more opaque this becomes. And we're gonna add about a quarter ounce of blue, thalo blue it's called. So when you mix yellow and blue together, if you remember anything about color theory or if you don't know anything about color theory, it is going to give us a green. And that's gonna be the glaze color we're gonna go over this with. Now we're ready to apply the glaze color itself. I'm gonna dip the brush in and just start away from the edges like we did before when we were applying the dye and just spread the glaze out very quickly because what with the technique we're going to do today is called dry brushing. So we're putting the glaze on with one brush and then we're going to take a separate brush that has nothing on it and start removing the amount of glaze that we want to take off and then leave behind as well. I'm using the brush on its side right now to get more of the glaze off. So here we go. So now we're going to start evening this out with this brush technique. You have complete control over how much glaze you leave behind or take off. No two people are going to have the same depthness of their hand. So it's really important that usually one person does all the glazing work. Now if you want to take off more you could take the brush on its side like so and take off more of this glaze and leave behind just what you want. So the glaze is translucent when you first mix it. The more pigment you add to it the more opaque it becomes because pigment, the same type of pigment that they put into stains uh, will make the, the surface where you will read less of the grain markings. That's why when I'm doing finishing, I prefer to use dye colors versus quote unquote pigments because you get more clarity. So here we go. So this is what our surface looks like now with the glaze color on it. We're going to let this water-based glaze dry for about an hour or so, then we're going to apply a clear finish over that. Our next step now is we want to put another clear coat over the glaze color that we have now that this is dry to lock this in place because we're going to put a secondary glaze color over this to create a multi-tone effect. So same thing again, we've got this Deft spray can, D-E-F-T uh, gloss. We're going to go around and spray this, lock that glaze color into where when we put our next glaze color, it'll go over it and it won't go into it. We'll be able to take off as much as we want to take off. So our glaze is, here's the formula as follows. The same glaze that we used before from the same manufacturer rather. This is Modern Masters. It's a water-based glaze. We have two ounces of the glaze. We have one ounce of the Thalo Blue pigment. And we have two ounces of some white latex primer. And that is making up our secondary glaze color, which is almost like a powder blue, if you will. So now we're going to apply that over the surface and do the same thing we did before with that dry brushing technique. You don't have to get a lot of the glaze because it's it'll spread out very quickly. You just want to get it on there, get it even, because you're going to basically take off as much as you want to take off. So there again, this is called a dry brushing technique. These inexpensive brushes always leave hairs behind. There we go. So now I'm going to take the brush on its side so I can take off even more of that. Constantly wiping the brush off to take off that glaze. I'm going to take it on its side again and take off even more because I want this to be sort of very subtle. I'm 
I'm gonna go across it. Kind of get those brush marks out of it and then I'm gonna go back over it. Take it again on its side, take off a little bit more. Now you could also use the rag too. You don't have to just use a brush. You could take the rag and gently go across it and take off as much as you want. And if you don't like what you've done at all, all you have to do is dampen that rag and you can take off even more of the glaze. So I'm gonna take off even more. And I'll take it all off. It's very forgiving that way. I'll put on a little bit more again because I actually do want some of this color on here. But you can see how important it is to have that surface seal very, very well to where you can take off as much of that glaze as you want or leave behind what you want. And I think that's about what I want on this. It's about the look I'm going for. So once this is dry, then we're gonna seal it with our finish coats of clear lacquer and we're done. Our final step today is gonna to be put our clear lacquer finish over the last glaze color that we did to lock that in, seal that in, and protect the surface from the glaze being worn off. So it's important that you put a number of finish coats over the surface to make sure it's sealed well enough. In this case, we're using Deft again, spray lacquer. This particular sheen level is satin. I like satin finishes, especially over glazes like this. Cross hatch pattern again, I'll spray it both ways. Done, we'll put a second coat on after it dries and then it's finished.